everyone and welcome to Disaster Peace Publishing House. I'm Dev Solovey. And I am Cy Metz. And this is a podcast where we cover the good, bad, but mostly bad of weird internet literature, dramatic readings included. And... <laughs> now, Dev, you have something very special for us today. I do. We're going to be moving into what is, I'm hoping is a two-parter, might even be a three-parter. Um, oh, God only hopes. Yeah, so this one I did actually bring to Sai ahead of time, which is kind of breaking from our usual format, or at least I brought the concept uh, of it to him. So we are going to be covering a uh, piece of internet literature from the late 2000s called Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles, baby! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we want to start off with, um, we're also going to say just a quick disclaimer in regards to Harry Potter. We are fascinated by all of the weird fan content that has come out of the Harry Potter fandom, especially in kind of the early years of internet fandom. However, we are fully aware J.K. Rowling is a turf and a gross person, and we do not endorse Harry Potter or J.K. Rowling in any way. So Yeah, and we live in the United States, too, so we can say she's a crusty bitch whose views align with Nazis. So Yeah, yeah. no. It's just, it, <laughs> what, what else is there to say about it? We, we can say it because it's true, and f- yeah. fuck you, turf. Come yeah. after us. Yeah, it's objectively true. We dare true. you. <laughs> we dare you, J.K. Rowling. Yeah, we'll fight you in a Denny's parking lot. We got to make sure that her name isn't anywhere in the metadata of this when you put that because there's she could actually she's she's famous for like name searching herself and just like picking beefs. Oh, well, that'll be great for engagement. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> yes. Seriously, oh, no. please. Oh, no. Please yeah. come for us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, um, all right. So Voice critical will probably make a video about it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, that'd be great. <laughs> Um, So I want to get into, uh, talk about Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. This this is going to be kind of a soft foray into talking about My Immortal, because we do have to cover a little bit of that eventually. This is kind of within the circles of that. It has never been confirmed as a troll fic. It is theorized to be so. It's by a user on fanfiction.net named Proud Housewife. This Uh, This piece came out in the late 2000s, and the genesis of it was because, I don't know how much you remember about the culture surrounding Harry Potter in the 2000s, but it was all anybody could talk about. Right. Like, people would never shut up about Harry Potter. And I remember, because I was, you know, I was a fan of it too. Everybody was. Oh, oh, I was a, I was a short little kid, usually with a bold cut adjacent haircut and glasses. I am fucking well aware that everyone (laughs) was aware of harry potter yeah yeah so um and this was also in the 2000s this was a time when like people still kind of took evangelical christians seriously and so there was backlash against harry potter from evangelical christian communities especially in the united states who did not want their children watching the harry potter movies or reading the books because they felt it endorsed witchcraft this sounds absurd, it is, but you and I actually know somebody, yeah. we went to high school with somebody who was forbidden by her mother from reading or watching Harry Potter. And, and it's extremely shocking to me nowadays because of, let's just say, the way that the winds of culture have changed. Yeah. That because of the types of things that J.K. Rowling believes and talks about a lot, Suddenly, these people really, really like her and the Harry mm. Potter universe, and it's very trendy to paint it as if it's the only wholesome yeah. one out there. <clears throat> it's it's nuts because that's all you would fucking hear about is just yeah. LMAO. We're reading this harmless children's story, and these uh, people uh, who are really obsessed with Jesus really don't like that. Those are two objective facts that coincided with one another. Yeah, and now for like ten years. Yeah, and now almost twenty years later, it's it's really switched around. So I want to get into the like um, imagine if you will, like if suddenly Joel Austin came out and was just like, "Yo, Pokemon slaps." It was never associated with Satan. In fact, it's the only wholesome children's franchise out there. (laughs) Yeah, no, it is. It is truly wild. So. I want to get into kind of the premise of Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles and 
to do, I think the author words it best, so I'm going to go ahead and read the fan fiction description for you. Oh, goodness. Again, the username uh, is Proud Housewife. The writer is, or so she is called, Grace Ann Parsons. Uh, she's from Texas. and um, oh, That good old <clears throat> middle name thrown in there yeah, for, yeah. for authenticity's sake. Yeah, it does feel, <laughs> it does feel authentic at times. So yeah. the description reads, Do you want your little ones to read books, and they want to read the Harry Potter books, but you do not want them to turn into witches? Well, this is the story for you. This story has all the adventure of JKR's books, but will not lead your children astray. For concerned mommies everywhere. Blessings, Grace Ann. (laughs) So that's the... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my god this is my favorite kind of moral panic literature yeah, uh-huh it's the like where the that's like that thinks that the fiction thing is real somehow yeah yeah it's it's the kind of like if you can't beat them join them like yeah. once once the evangelical christians were done bashing rock and roll they decided to make christian rock bands as yeah. if they could combat it somehow and this is kind of that rationale but in late 2000s pop culture so uh would you like me to get started Huh, like is a strong word. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna... Maybe not. Maybe not a strong. Maybe it's not strong enough. I'm vibrating <laughs> in anticipation. I don't know what the emotion is yet, but we'll find yeah. out if it's fight or flight in just a minute. And this, I, I want to point this out. Like I had intended to bring this to and just do a single episode on it and just show the first chapter and the last chapter. But as I was reading through it, I realized. All of this is good. I can't pick out the best parts. All of it is good. So that's why we're going to read the whole thing. Um, So uh, without further ado, let's dive in. Let's go. So author's note. Hello, friends. My name is Grace Ann. I'm new to this whole fan fiction thing, but recently I've encountered a problem that I believe this is the solution to. My little ones have been asking to read the Harry Potter books, and of course, I'm happy for them to be reading, but I don't want them turning into witches. So I thought... Why not make some slight changes so these books are family-friendly? And then I thought, why not share this with all the other mommies who are facing the same problem? So, ta-da! Here it is. I am so excited to share this with all of you. So without further ado, and here we begin. Once (laughs) Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Harry Potter who lived under the stairs in a house on Privet Drive with his aunt and uncle. He was a good, obedient boy who did all his chores, but he felt that there was something missing in his life, something big and special, but he could not quite name it. He stayed up every night and wished for this special something, but then, one day, there was a knock at his door, and everything changed. Okay, I just want to say that this is this is often my favorite way that, like, cheap Christian, like, storytelling, like... Fuck Harry Potter and the original source material, like, is lame, too. But you gotta give him credit. J.K. Rowling didn't just come out and go, like, Harry Potter is a sad little boy and his uh, adopted parents are mean to him. They, like, sh- she, like, shows it. They, mm-hmm. they, she shows, like, oh, well, they're belittling, you know, he goes through his day and these are the subtle little ways his life is shit. He, like, Christians don't give a shit about that stuff. And this, it's this... just, like, he's sad... And he's missing something, and it's probably Jesus. Yeah. Like, in the first couple of sentences, it's just yeah. like, fuck it, let's get right to the Jesus, well, and also, knock on the door, everything changes. And also, like, if you, like, I was an older sibling, and I told, like, bedtime stories to my younger sibling. This is kind of how those stories begin, which is why it was kind of believable to me, because it was yeah. coming from the perspective of, like, a mom trying to tell a kid's story, and that's how it reads. Anyway, I'd like to continue. Yes. Oh, uh, I forgot a content warning. Almost all of this is kid-friendly. She just has some really weird things to say about Catholics later on, so if you're, oh, if you're, if you're Catholic, <laughs> you know, maybe be aware of that. Um, anyway. Answer the door, Harry, his aunt Petunia, a career woman, barked from her armchair where she sat with her feet up. She had short, curly blonde hair and never wore any makeup. Uncle Vernon nodded sheepishly from the kitchen and put a tray of moist, chocolatey brownies in the oven. Shouldn't you be doing that, Harry thought. But he was a very obedient young boy, so he answered the door right away. He turned the brass metal doorknob and pulled open the heavy wooden door. On the porch was standing a huge, muscular man with a big, manly beard, and he was dressed in a plaid red shirt, blue jeans, and sturdy leather boots. His chest was covered in a thick, unruly carpet of coarse brown hair. He wore a necklace that looked to Harry like a lowercase t. (laughs) 
<laughs> just looking at oh, Harry. Oh, wow, he's literally been living in a closet the last yeah, 10 years. No. <laughs> 10 years old, never heard, never seen a crucifix. Yeah, in I know. England? I know. Just looking at Harry, feel happy, peaceful somehow, but he couldn't say why. Good morning, kiddo. The man greeted amiably and smiled at Harry. He had the peaceful, friendly sort of face you just knew you could trust. My name is Hagrid. Could I speak to your mommy and daddy? I don't have a mommy or daddy, Harry replied sadly, and looked at his raggedy old shoes that were blue. Perhaps that was why he felt so lonely, he thought. Not for the first time. Maybe that was what he was missing, a mommy and daddy. But no, that was not quite right. I am so sorry to hear that. Hagrid uttered empathetically. "'You can speak with my auntie and uncle,' Harry retorted politely, and blinked his big, blue, childlike eyes. "'What do you want?' Aunt Petunia peered out the door with her narrow, suspicious eyes, and she was wearing a baggy, unflattering pantsuit. <laughs> "'Wow, what the fuck?' <laughs> "'She really hates career women.' "'Yeah.' Uh, "'Hello, neighbor. I was wondering if you have been saved.' Hagrid exclaimed brightly, and tipped his wide-brimmed straw cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Time out. So, this is why I'm leaning, like you, into authenticity, authenticity territory. Because, mm -hmm. like, this bitch didn't read Harry Potter. No. Did she? No, she turned Hagrid into a cowboy. <laughs> Pretty much. This is where it really pops off. Um, Hell yeah, let's go. Aunt Petunia laughed a gravelly laugh and leaned forward on her sturdy practical boots. Saved? Don't tell me you are one of those Christians. <laughs> <laughs> Harry did not know what that word meant. <laughs> oh, I have never heard of Jesus. I'm the boy who lived. But Hagrid... Tell me about the man who died for my sins, please. <laughs> the Hagrid smile was the most peaceful smile he'd ever seen. It made Harry feel warm and happy inside, just seeing the glowing, radiant grin on the kind, friendly stranger's face. He wondered why Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon did not smile like that. <laughs> yes, I am, Hagrid replied kindly. Are you? Aunt Petunia laugh laughed again and stuck her pointy, sharp nose up in the air. We are too smart for that. Haven't you read Dawkins? God is dead. Dawkins proved that. Would you like us to educate you on the Dawkins? Just how people talk to each other. Yeah, you, you know, know, how normal atheists on talk. On the Dawkins. <laughs> what is a Christian? Harry queried innocently and scuffed his shoe on the shaggy yellow carpet, which had not been vacuumed in some time. Aw, shucks, mister. Can you tell me what a Jesus is? Wild to me that Aunt Petunia's soy boy husband hasn't vacuumed the carpet. Ooh, <laughs> he'll make, yeah. He'll make brownies, but he won't vacuum. Oh, no, because it's, uh, because she's a proud housewife, right? So she has to, like, shame yeah. mm -hmm. uh, this, this straw person in her mind for what she, she yeah. thinks. Oh, and she does that a lot, yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, no, that's, especially with Aunt Petunia, she really does that. Christians are people who want to be good, Hagrid explained wisely, and crouched down so he was on eye level with Harry. We want to go to heaven after we die. Do you know what heaven is, Harry? Harry shook his head, and his big eyes were wide and curious. Is that a kind of closet? <laughs> a new kind of closet to be in, yes. Is that, is that heaven's a closet with a bigger bed? <laughs> Harry shook his head, and his big eyes were wide and curious. Heaven is a beautiful place where we can be with God. Aunt Petunia smacked her hands over Harry's young ears, and her voice was sickly sweet when she said, Thank you very much for your concern, sir, but he does not, uh, not need your religion. He has science and socialism and birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she's a Jehovah's Witness! Haven't you heard of evolution? I have a very good textbook on evolution that I could give you on it if you would like to learn things. Oh yeah, she's such a bitch for wanting to unwarrantly hand in, <laughs> hand someone just an unbelievable amount of writing. I know. That's, and hey, we're we're Christians. We're not about that. <laughs> we're evangelical Jehovah's Witnesses. We would never make you read a stupid fucking book out of nowhere. I think the thing that happens next is possibly one of my favorite things that happens in this fanfiction. Uh, Hagrid laughed wisely. Evolution is a fairy tale. You don't really believe that, do you? 
Yes, I do, Aunt Petunia screeched. Well, then prove it. Aunt Petunia could only stare at him, and her big mouth hung open dumbly. Here she thought she was so educated and always demanded that Christians prove what they believed in, but she couldn't even prove her own religion. It was then that Harry knew who the smart one here was. Damn. I know. Got her. I know. <laughs> just like, just her, pr- her, her dumb fucking stupid bitch mouth hung open wide like a fish. She claims to be an ancestor. I know her stupid ape mouth because her, she believes her, her dumb her fucking parents mouth are apes. breather. <laughs> <laughs> bitch mouth. Yeah, I know. This fucking next year career woman. <laughs> she crunched her big heavy feet on the on the gross carpet. Her dumb bitch face wouldn't vacuum. <laughs> her stupid soy boy husband. Yeah. He ran in the room with brownies for some reason <laughs> and then disappeared forever. Oh uh, god. I, I I love that because it really just it, it definitely outs this person. Yeah. Um, Tell me how to get to this heaven place, Harry cried wistfully, clasping his hands together. Sometimes the wisdom of little ones is really amazing. We think we grown-ups know it all, but then God speaks through the mouths of little ones and shows us how we are all mortals struggling along the path of life. Humility. What? Yeah, she breaks into talking about how much she loves kids a lot, which is like, you know, fine, but like yeah. in a weird Christian way, you know? Well, yeah, I mean... I, I totally believe that, given her angle of, like, we have to protect the children. So that's, like, the, the whole reason she's doing this. Yeah, right? yeah, no. And, and um, like, but, it, but it's just so disconnected from everything. That is a buckwild thing to say to a child just asking a question. I know, it really is. And she hey, does a lot. <laughs> hey, Mom, uh, can, you, can you tell me why the chicken crossed the road? Oh, oh, my sweet little boy. <laughs> he doesn't... He doesn't know why the chicken didn't cross the road. He, he has never heard the jo- Sometimes God comes along to remind us that children have never heard jokes before. Ah, uh, the innocence of little ones. The she innocence been... of little ones. Yeah. All you have to do is be saved. Do you want to be saved? I do, I do, Harry squealed, jumping up and down. Then pray the sinner's prayer. Aunt Petunia tried to stop him, but she was powerless against Harry's pure, innocent, holy energy. Soon, Harry had said the prayer. Hagrid beamed happily. You're a Christian now, Harry! Hagrid cried proudly. <laughs> so, this kid who didn't even know what a Christian is before. Yeah. He just fucking says the... He just, just knows the Within him, he knows the... I have the power of anime and Jesus on my side. Well, don't you know, God often speaks through little ones. So Harry isn't so much a character as he is like a little meat puppet that yeah, God is much. sticking his hand up into. Yeah, and just regurgitating all of these evangelical talking points. Harry smiled, but then interrogated, but how do I be a Christian? I don't know how. Had- I know the sinner's prayer, <laughs> but I don't know how to be a Christian. I- this could have been a great opportunity for Hagrid to teach the the surrogate child character the prayer and also the child reading it like Mm -hmm. an educational opportunity and just no they didn't yeah no this this writer she she commits the faux pas of like expecting everybody to already know this stuff it demands both familiarity with jesus and harry potter Mm -hmm. a target demographic that she admits that she's trying to reach has never heard of Pretty much, yeah. Writing a story that only Christians and people who know Harry Potter can fucking Well, that follow. is kind of what she set out to do, is, like, make sure that Christian kids could read this. But anyway, I, I'm almost at the end, and I kind of want to yeah, oh, uh, keep sorry. going. I know, so, I'm, I'm nitpicking this shit. Yeah, it's probably best not to do that too, too often. Because <laughs> we're going to see some whack shit later on. Hagrid grinned widely. There is only one place to learn that. Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Author's note. So... What do you all think? I may not be a professional writer, but I think I am being given the talent to pull this off in service of a greater mission. Smiley face. Blessings, Grace Ann. And that's chapter one. Well, Grace Ann, I'll tell you what I think. I think that you are right on the nose when you say that you are not a professional writer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would also say that. There's like a... About myself, but you know. There's sort of an arc that Grace Ann goes through, too, where that's kind of a part of it, but we'll, we'll get to that. Oh, um, oh, honey. So chapter three, uh, chapter two is called New Horizons. 
Author's note, hello friends, I have been getting so many lovely, thankful messages from mommies everywhere, and I just want to say thank you all for your encouragement. However, I have also been getting several messages saying that my story is bad because Harry Potter is not just about witches, it's also about friendship and kindness and bravery. Friends, this is exactly what I have been saying! Harry Potter has many good things about it, but it still has witchcraft, so my children cannot read it. But that is why I am writing this, so they can all have the adventure and good morals of the Harry Potter books without all that bad stuff that is bogging it down. I mean, Matthew 3.12, am I right? So without further ado, on to chapter two, smiley face. I mean, Matthew 3.12, am I right? Smiley yeah. face. I have no idea what Matthew 3.12 is, and I don't really care to look it up. All right, so continuing with chapter two. Hold, hold on, I think it's important. You Let's, think it's important? I think it's important. I know it's a famous verse, but I can't remember what it is. Matthew 3. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Huh? Actually, that kind of makes sense. It's like taking yeah. impurities out of something. I was about to say, like, yeah, this, that seems like a pretty good read. This seems too gen- This is genuine. It seems legitimate. This is genuine. Yeah, yeah. it seems, it seems really legitimate. Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles? Harry queried and clasped his hands. Just at hearing that name, he felt such a sense of inner peace. He wanted to have more of that peace and he wanted to learn how to be a good Christian. He was starting to think that peace and being a good Christian were in fact the exact same thing. I want to go there. Hagrid beamed widely. He had been praying so hard to save a soul today, and he was so happy to have saved the soul of such a sweet, earnest little one. The poor boy, being raised by two parents who were not Christian, and who both went to work and left him with a babysitter all day long, it was a good thing Hagrid had got there in time. Five years down the road, Harry might have been a fornicating, drug-addicted evolutionist. Okay, so... <laughs> that's so weird. You'd think that the angle... I'm sorry, I keep I keep interrupting. But <laughs> you'd think that the angle would be, and they send him to public school. Ooh, but no, just, I'm kind of on Hagrid's side here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they yeah. literally locked a kid in the closet, and he's so dis detached from the world that he doesn't know what a christian is yeah no that's i mean if you look like if that were a real life perspective it would definitely be child abuse yeah <laughs> so like this, this is it's like a situation where it's like you look at a you look at a kid and you're like okay clearly cps needs to be called but then he he's caught in wizard foster care now, yeah pretty much you know? yeah <laughs> he's, at a, he's at a Christian shelter. Yeah, um, I, I agree with this on principle, not in execution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't be silly, Harry, Aunt Petunia commanded and wrung her long, bony hands. Come back inside. I will read to you about evolution from the Dawkins. You do not need that silly religion. Harry scrunched up his innocent little face and thought very hard. Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon were as close to parents as he had, and this was the only home he knew. Could he really leave? But he was saved now. He had prayed the sinner's prayer. He could not stay here. Not anymore. Not with what he knew now. Suddenly, he knew what he had to do. No, Aunt Petunia, he uttered calmly with childlike wisdom. Evolution is not real, and I am going to Hogwarts. No, no, Harry, Aunt Petunia screeched desperately. I have an idea. You can have a second birthday today. You like birthdays, right? <laughs> birthdays are not of God, Harry verbalized knowingly and looked at his aunt with an innocent wisdom. You tried to corrupt me, but it did not work. But I forgive you, Aunt Petunia, because of Luke 23:34. Time to learn how to be a good Christian. I also, know. I know all these little... Yeah. Well, gotcha. I got I got saved and now I know the entire Bible off the top of my head. He just he just fucking got the Rafiki Christ sigil on his forehead. And he just <laughs> floated up and his third Christian eye opened up. Hagrid was amazed once again at the wisdom of little ones. He did not know if he could forgive someone who had hurt him as much as this woman had hurt little Harry. Deny him the truth? Who could be so cruel? But Harry did not even think twice about it. He forgave, just like that. Truly, Hagrid gained a new understanding of Matthew 19.14 that day. Do not leave, Harry, Dudley wailed childishly, having never been mentioned until now. 
I must, Harry said, and stepped over the threshold. Goodbye, Dursleys. I hope you are saved too one day. And with that, he and Hagrid began to walk down Privet Drive. How will we get to the school, Hagrid? Harry queried curiously. We will pray, Hagrid retorted knowledgeably. How do we do that? Harry solicited inquisitively. (laughs) Watch, Hagrid said, (laughs) and then got down on his knees on the road. He motioned for Harry to get down on his knees too. Hagrid raised his hands to the heavens and cried out in a deep, thunderous voice, Dear Lord, take us to Hogwarts! Harry felt himself (laughs) being whisked away, and in a moment, he was sitting in the cool, damp grass outside a humongous, beautiful castle. He looked in awe at the tall towers and the gray stones. What a beautiful place. Wow, yeah, you're right. Tall towers of gray stone. That sounds fucking gorgeous, lady. (laughs) You know, and they just pray to teleport. It's wonderful. A tall, thin man with a long, pointed beard and big wire spectacles stood in front of Harry. He was wearing a brown tweed suit and a nice matching hat. His shoes were made of leather and polished until they shone. He had a smile much like Hagrid's smile. So peaceful, Harry just knew he could trust him. A lovely, kindly young woman with flowing blonde hair and a pleasant, heart-shaped face stood beside this holy man. Hello there, little one, the man greeted amicably. I am the Reverend Albus Dumbledore. (laughs) And this is my wife, Minerva. Welcome to Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Damn, this this lady came in and, like, fucking erased Dumbledore's sexuality before J.K. Rowling did. Yeah. She's kind of a pioneer. Yeah, no, she, she when she did this, she went hard. Author's note, blessings. She ends it with that. What's the author's note? Uh, it just says blessings. She says oh. blessings at the end of every chapter. Oh, I, I thought you were just, like, saying sarcastically, like, oh, thank God, it's over. <laughs> No. Okay, so on on to chapter three is called Dinner Time with an exclamation point. Yeah! Author's note. Hello, friends. Who doesn't love dinner time? Exclamation point. I have struggled a lot about whether or not to keep going with this story, but with a lot of praying, my husband and I have decided it is the right thing to do. We want our little ones to have good Christian literature to read, and in this modern world, sometimes that can be hard to come by, so I will just have to make do. Pleased to meet you, Reverend Dumbledore, Harry replied enthusiastically and got to his feet. This sure is a beautiful place you have here. The Reverend beamed. Why, thank you, little one. His voice had a distinctive southern twang to it. Oh, I didn't I didn't remember that. That uh, made Harry feel so well, safe. Well, there. <laughs> My name's Albus Dumbledore. <laughs> Welcome to Hogwarts. <laughs> we got the pig cracklings for dinner tonight. Get ready, folks. It's like that hobo guy from Gravity Falls. <laughs> yeah, McG- Hi there, I'm old man McDumbledore. <laughs> Y'all want to see my fancy beard? There's possums in it. Incredible. <laughs> he knew, uh, Harry knew in that moment that the Reverend was a man of God. This poor <laughs> Because it's southern accent. I know. <laughs> This poor little one was being raised in a terrible situation, Hagrid declared concernedly. He was watched by a babysitter every second of the day. His aunt saw him as part of a perfect life package, like the big house, the fancy career, the speedy car. Dumbledore shook his head sadly. Too bad no one told her. Parenting should be about the children, not the parents. That is why it's called parenting. That's got to be the one good take she has. However, her version of that is probably, so that's why mommy stays home. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it really is. Yeah. And she gets into it later. She really yeah. does regurgitate a lot of um, uh, conservative feminist talking points. Hagrid nodded wisely. Dumbledore turned to Harry and announced authoritatively, Now you can start your classes tomorrow morning. Today, you can get settled into your dormitory. But first, why don't you eat dinner with my family and me? Really? Harry gasped excitedly. I've never had a family dinner before. Why don't you come with us, then? Dumbledore cried kindly, and then got down on his knees. Here's my son, Leatherface. Don't ask what we're eating. (laughs) (laughs) And then got down on his knees. Everyone else did the same. Raising his large, massive, manly hands up to the heavens, Dumbledore bellowed in a voice even louder than Hagrid's had been, Lord, please take us to the kitchen! (laughs) 
<laughs> Through the power of Yowie hands in Jesus, I will move us through space and time. That's another thing. That's another thing that made me feel like this person is legitimate because she has like this weird kink for manly hands and chest hair. And you'll see that like a yeah, lot. No. <laughs> like, it's really weird. Uh, it's just like a weirdly specific kink. Um, Minerva's loins moistened at the sight of his <laughs> gnarled knuckles. The oh, amount man. of times they writhed inside her were countless, but it didn't lessen her excitement any less. <laughs> Suddenly they all found themselves in a tasteful, decorated kitchen. <laughs> wow, Harry shouted in awe. He was still getting used to the power of prayer. Sometimes we take the wonderful things the Lord gives us for granted, and it takes a newcomer to the fold for us to understand just how blessed we are. That was amazing! Hagrid smiled knowingly. God is an amazing guy. (laughs) He sure is, the reverend's wife chuckled before getting down to her knees and raising her own hands upward. Dear Lord, please set the table with the sky blue cloth and the Sunday dishes, and please give us biscuits, fried golden brown and gravy, creamy mashed potatoes, my great aunt Eleanor's corn casserole, corn on the cob slathered with butter, and for dessert, some chocolate raspberry cookies. (laughs) I just want to elaborate for the listeners. The whole time I was listing off all of that food, uh, Sai kind of looked like he was either holding back laughter or just like hemorrhaging internally. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I'm, I'm hearkening back to all the times that I sat around the table for, for family dinner and how prayer was like this. We are thankful that we have the opportunity to work hard and be the masters of our own. Fi- we thank the Lord for giving us this opportunity. Here it's like, no, nah, you pray to Jesus. He gonna give you them biscuits and gravy. <laughs> like, that's the best part of being Christian. Is you just go, yeah, give me some Popeyes. And suddenly it's there. See, this this is one of the few things. Like that specific passage is one of the few things that made me think maybe this isn't authentic. Because I was reading that I and I was like. she just got hungry while she was typing. <laughs> it's, just, it's just too much. I, I mean, maybe it's a dinner she would cook. I don't know. But it was just. All of these things it's appeared. Like, it's, like her, it's like her husband was proofreading. It's like, you didn't describe your dinner good enough. <laughs> yeah. Time. Would not surprise me if he did. Uh, he, he comes up in the author's notes as well. So all of these things appeared on the table exactly as the reverend's wife uh, had asked for them. Masterfully prepared and delicious smelling, Harry's mouth dropped open. Truly, this woman was a real Proverbs 31 wife. <laughs> can we can we get that on a t-shirt? <laughs> only I'm real, a real Proverbs 31 wife. <laughs> only real Proverbs 31 wives uh, make family dinners. Hermione, the reverend, summoned loudly, Dinner time! Immediately, and with cheerful obedience, an 11-year-old girl in a pretty pink dress with a matching bow came running down the stairs. She ran over to her father and gave him the winning smile that daughters have. Welcome home, Daddy! She smiled and turned to his wife. Can I help it all with dinner, Mommy? It is all prepared now, thanks be to God, her mother retorted gracefully. Hermione nodded knowingly. Hermione, I would like you to meet Harry Potter, our newest student at Hogwarts School of Prayer and Miracles. Dumbledore introduced magnanimously. Harry, I would like you to meet Hermione Granger, my beloved daughter. Because her last name isn't Dumbledore, apparently. Uh, Pleased to meet you, Hermione responded sweetly with an shy grin. Harry could barely respond. This was the most beautiful young woman he had ever come across. So different from all the girls in public school who were... (laughs) Who okay, were fo- so now he's gone to public school! <laughs> who were focused on trying to be like the career woman they saw on Sex in the City. This little one was the picture of innocence and godliness. <laughs> we all we all remember that one time where PBS canceled uh, Maya and Miguel in favor of Miranda and her gal pals. <laughs> now, Dumbledore pronounced genially, let's eat. As the holy men, women, and little ones dug into the delicious manna the Lord had granted them, The conversation amongst the adults turned to darker topics. Harry listened intently, and he did not understand it, but he was very interested. Dark days are coming, Hagrid pronounced gravely, around a mouthful of casserole. Evil Evil forces are coming into this world, and the little ones at Hogwarts may be our last resort. 
Psalm 125 or Psalm 127 5, Dumbledore referenced solemnly. I don't know if they're talking about dark wizards or dark skinned people. Uh, you'll see in a moment. Oh no! <laughs> it's not it's not people of color, don't oh, worry. Okay. I would have content warning for that if it was. Okay. Because um, this just feels too real. Yeah. Like it, it would be. St- <laughs> we've, no. we've all been there. Remarkably, she avoids race. Oh, thank um, Christ. Yeah, it's only like weird stuff about Catholics. Okay, good. <laughs> And the others around the table nodded knowingly. Hogwarts might be the last hope for the forces of good in this world. Author's note. Blessings. So, let jump into chapter four and this is where kind of the central conflict is really introduced um author's note hello friends i apologize for being gone so long one of my little ones came down with pneumonia so of course my life has been nothing but doctor's appointments and chicken soup and that's on top of all the other work a mommy has to do i had nearly forgotten about this little story of mine when i sat down to catch up on my email and lo and behold there were dozens of messages from this lovely site Now, of course, there were some hateful messages that made me very sad, but for every review posted by an evolutionist with a bee in his bonnet, there were three lovely private messages from other mommies out there thanking me for doing the Lord's work. Wow! I know when the Lord is telling me something. So, here is another chapter for all you mommies out there, and all you non-believers spreading hatred. Well, let's see if you aren't converted by the time this story's over. Okay, bet. Let's go. (laughs) When the delicious filling dinner had ended, Harry wiped some last tasty cookie crumbs from the sides of his mouth. He was very full and very tired. Discovering the truth, with a capital T, being saved and coming to Hogwarts, it had certainly been a long day for this little one. You look like you could use a good night's sleep, the reverend's wife commented daintily. How would you like to move into your dormitory? I would love to, Harry cried cheerfully. He was so excited to become a student here, and he was so grateful for the opportunities the Lord had given him. Sometimes, people who have done without are the most grateful. Hermione, why don't you show our newest student to the dormitory? Dumbledore suggested wisely. I'd love to, Daddy, Hermione replied obediently with an innocent girlish smile, and got to her feet and smoothed out the skirt of her becoming pink frock. Should I clean the kitchen first? I can take care of that tonight, the reverend's wife answered indulgently, and she was already beginning to clear the elegant porcelain dishes. Thank you, Mommy, Hermione shouted gratefully, and she walked over to Harry. Would you please come with me? Harry blushed shyly and got to his feet. His aunt had never taught him how to talk to pretty girls. She always said that pretty girls were shallow and not very smart, and that a real woman put her career first and didn't care about her looks. But it only took one look at this godly young girl to realize just how wrong that was. I just I just want to interject real quick and tell the audience to imagine I'm making the most sour face the entire time <laughs> you're reading that. That's the most uncom- viscerally uncomfortable I have been. So far? That's the most uncomfortable thing that has been read on this show. So not this episode, but really? chilling that to was, me. That I was I don't real? know. Something to me about, like, adults who are, like, so obsessed with, like, making sure that, like, boys like girls, that they they do that to children characters immediately when they are in the same yeah. room with each other and trying to describe from a kid's point of view being embarrassed by being attracted to it. That's so fucking uncomfortable. Yeah, and she pairs it with a lot of conservative feminist discourse, which you'll hear shortly. It's um, it's just so fucking weird to me. I've never yeah. I've never really been okay with yeah. that well, ever. Probably because it's indoctrination. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. this lady read Harry Potter and was pissed off at the fact that Hermione and Harry were just friends and set out to fix that by making these children want to kiss each other. I know, which is... Uh, okay, in that case, okay. I'm going to blast through this next yep. sentence and then we can move on. So, A woman taking pride in her appearance is honoring the Lord, because after all, it is the Lord who gave her a pretty face and nice hair. Taking care of that is important. Harry got the feeling that Hermione was as beautiful on the inside as she was on the outside. The two little ones <laughs> stepped out into the brisk, chilly night, and for a few minutes they were both silent. 
Harry did not think it was possible for the sweet demure girl to be as nervous as he was, but going by the silence, perhaps she was a little nervous herself. After a few minutes, Hermione welcomed shyly, Welcome to Hogwarts! It is a wonderful place and we are so glad to have you here. Harry's face reddened as they crossed an expansive flowery field. They were going in the direction of a cluster of imposing, stone, academic-looking buildings. Thank you, he muttered happily. It is beautiful and it feels very holy. It is, Hermione commented enthusiastically, and her chocolate-colored, carefully curled tresses were bouncing along with her steps. My father she is... Also, this author is also like, can't be a ginger. Nix that. Yeah, <laughs> no gingers. Those devil freaks. Wait, if there's I, two I, things we can't stand. Uh, I don't want. I don't want to look if, like if an asshole later. If there's two things that this, that this lady can't fucking stand by, it's gingers and Catholics. Apparently. <laughs> oh yeah, we will see. Um, <laughs> to, she. It, it's funny you that. mentioned that. No, I, I'm just saying because you said that earlier. You mentioned it earlier. I well, know it hasn't come up in the text yet. The Catholics are the gingers here, uh, which is funny that you mentioned that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> My father is a very godly man, and uh, and to spread the word of the Lord is his greatest dream. Truly, that is a noble dream, Harry responded gravely, with wisdom beyond his few years. They walked for a few more minutes in silence. Eventually, they reached the end of the lovely green meadow. The boys' dormitory is this way, Hermione exposited knowingly, and with the innocent casual affection so often found in children, she grabbed Harry's hand as she led him around the edifice of classrooms. Harry was so nervous he could not think of anything to say. His brain fumbled for the perfect Christian thing to say, but before he could even manage a word, Hermione came to a stop in front of a tall stone tower. This is the boys' dormitory, which she already said. Um, uh, the yeah. devout young woman explained kindly, and she gestured to the heavy oak door beside them. I would show you inside, but I would hate to cause a scandal. I understand, Harry declared graciously. Too many young men these days pressure young women into things undesired and forbidden. It is the mark of a true old-fashioned gentleman to respect the fact that every young woman is another man's future wife. Uh, that, to me, is one of the more atrocious things. Exactly. In, in uh, yucky. Yeah, that to me, yeah. So. Again, fuck J.K. Rowling. But, like, f for a turf, she really wasn't that uh concerned at the time with whether or not children were fucking each other yeah i don't the, think the, i it just the text just kind of like took on assumption that sometimes kids can just be friends and walk each other from place to place yeah without yeah. being fucking weird about it yeah ah yeah ah! Well, don't worry we're gonna blast through this chapter it sucks. <laughs> it sucks so bad. Okay, I gotta blast through these sentences, all right? So hear me out, because we gotta get to the part, the next part about Voldemort and some weirdness, uh, which takes a completely different tone. So we're just gonna blast through it. And we all know that it would be a dreadful, terrible sin to bring another man's wife into intimacy. Why does this modern culture suddenly treat that as okay simply because he does not have her yet? Man's laws may permit it, but the laws of the Lord are not bound by time. You can just walk your friend to their room, too! I, you know, this is, she's departing. She's not, she's not talking about the kids specifically, she's departing to talk about culture as a whole. I know, but like... If the story if the story is about like her trying to avoid the corruption of children. That's she's making the statement in a deeply weird way, but that's the statement she's making. But like the implication with that is that there is something in the text that made her mind like through the original that made her mind go there and felt the need to correct. Yeah. Is I how mean, I'm saying. Like yeah, well, the thing a lot of is, Christians do that. It, it's 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 just like the impl the implication of this is that she she watched Harry Potter there was a moment where, or read Harry Potter, where like, a, like Hermione was walking Harry or Ron over, and she's like, "This is sexually charged." <laughs> that is so deeply disturbing to me. Would you like me to skip over like some of her proselytizing? No, is no, it? sorry. Okay. It's just I, I, I want to make that clear. Just I, I want to get that out of the way now. Yeah. That I am. That is deeply upsetting. So that way I don't have to keep saying it moving forward. <laughs> yeah. I'm anticipating there's going to be a lot of that. That make, that, it, That's deeply upsetting to this me. This scene... And, and every time This happens. is the most detail she goes into, as I recall, regarding yeah. interactions between Hermione and Harry. Hermione moved to push open the imposing large door, but she struggled with the knob. It was quite a heavy door, but Harry was a good, devout Christian now. He would not have a young, godly girl struggling to open a door which he was perfectly capable of opening himself. With the simple faith so often seen in little ones, Harry got down on his knees and lifted his hands skyward and shouted prayerfully, 
Dear Lord, please open these doors and allow me to enter my new home. With a loud, thunderous boom that echoed through the expansive, beautiful campus, the doors crashed open. Harry stood up piously as Hermione's jaw dropped. Now she knew for certain that this was a truly a man of the Lord. She could have done that, though, too. Like, she, with the power of prayer, she how, could have done How that. fucking funny would it have been, though, if he said... Lord, take me to my new home! And he just got teleported back to the Dursleys. <laughs> <laughs> Careful what you pray for, Harry. Job, motherfucker! <laughs> Harry was about to step inside when Hermione grabbed his arm. He blushed once more. Wait, Harry, Hermione uttered quickly. There's something you should know. What is it? Harry queried questioningly. My father says that dark times are coming, Hermione spoke worriedly. There is a man named Voldemort who wants to destroy all that we stand for. He, he is pushing an agenda in Congress, which will stop us from practicing our faith freely. Huh. <laughs> Not the evil Satan magic? But that is what our founding fathers built this nation for, Harry cried indignantly. The freedom of religion. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Voldemort doesn't care, Hermione remarked sadly, and she shook her head. And he is gaining power. The freedom of Christians to practice our faith is disappearing by the day. Soon, it will be like it was in Rome. Lovely lady-like tears began to roll down her delicate, terrified face. And I don't like lions. So what she's implying there for listeners who didn't get that, in Rome they persecuted Christians by putting them in the gladiatorial rings and having them mauled by lions. That's how heavy-handed this is. Very of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of self victimization Cr yeah. christian self-victimization yeah, i mean i think they still do that to some degree but I, I think they've gone more on the offensive these days yeah i guess so yeah. it's less we're under attack and more like all right our turn yeah. <laughs> yeah. it was always our turn but our turn now <laughs> it'll be all right yeah. harry reassured manfully <laughs> we <laughs> the way she uses adverbs is just buck wild like throughout the entire thing we will just need to pray really really hard that's why we're here after all you're so brave hermione pronounced admiringly and she wiped the tears from her eyes she flung her arms around harry's neck she girlishly hugged his boy body with her <laughs> girl arms and harry said thank you for hugging me manly-ishly yeah <laughs> thank you for giving like me a courage. boy <laughs> Harry patted her head before departing and entering his new home. It wasn't until the doors had closed behind him that he realized he did not know where he was supposed to sleep. The tower consisted of an old stone staircase winding up the steep, sacred walls, and there were doors leading into each bedroom off of the stairway corridor. Harry felt very lost for a moment, but a quick prayer showed him the way. As he collapsed into his bed, very tired from such an eventful day, he thought about the days that were coming. It was truly a good thing that the Lord had called him when he did. I'm gonna, oh, we're Christ. gonna, we're gonna cap the reading for episode one here. But I want to, I want to check in with you, Sai. What are, you, what are your thoughts so far? Man, uh, where to begin? I, I think I've, I've talked in depth already about the uncomfortableness of the forced heterosexuality. <laughs> yeah. To me also, like, as a transgender person who's been on both sides of the fence and experienced these kinds of gender roles sort of being shoved down your throat, it is just uncomfortable for me to watch because it's just like, it, it, it's forcing kids into something that like isn't, you know, it's not it's not healthy for them in the long run. It's not healthy yeah. for anybody, but like that kind of deep indoctrination and and that's why this reads as believable to me. I think if this person is a troll, they are at least deeply familiar with evangelical Christian culture. Because yeah. this is so this really does read this like This something... rings so true to the way that also the way that this this type of person who's so entrenched in the culture war of the day to even transplant Harry Potter, the famously British story that's not even really about, like, what's going on in Britain at the time. To take that and to put it into a contemporary American political context. Yeah. I mean, specifically, I think, because this woman is from Texas, specifically puts it in Texas. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there are some elements there's, of there's this. There's something hilarious to me about taking... 
a villain who's essentially like a fucking magic Hitler in thinking the worst thing he can possibly fucking be is a congressman who's treading up, who's trying to tread on me. Yeah, uh, an, an atheist. Literally worse than fictional evil Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Like, somehow some kind of atheist is yeah. equivalent to Hitler. You'd think that they would really lean into the, the dark magic angle and be like, yeah, it's like Satan magic or whatever. Voldemort's like the son of the devil, and he's like doing devil sh- He's like making people's skulls turn into gummy yeah. bears or some shit. And like the Christian discourse, it goes even deeper. Um, like, like, it's not just like conservative feminism. There's also like the kind of distrust of Catholics, which is very common in, in Protestantism, yeah. especially evangelical uh, kind of uh, American Christianity, which you see. But it's such a good representation of that. Like, it's, yeah. it's a work of genius in some way. <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like this kind of hyper-awareness of the way these types of things interacted with each other really only come from retrospect or being a part of it. They're, yeah. they're just so so much of this that, like, are, are baked into three different levels of, like, conservative American Christian brain worms <laughs> that, yeah, much. that read, like, if you were trying to make fun of it, wouldn't be as naturalistic in the way that the thoughts jump from one thought to, one, to another, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, th- there's a way that a lot of people at this time were trying to make fun of it that just w- was really disconnected and it came off, like, yeah. oafish and mean-spirited in a way that yeah. kind of gave these people credibility in yeah. a way I don't like. Well, like then, the sort the sort of like smug atheist the uh, rational skeptics rational right. skeptics those people still exist though those people yeah but like that that type of like bullyish atheist was loud enough of a voice in the media sphere at the time to give this sort of self victimizing christian not legitimate reasons to feel victimized but like a fake reason to right yeah yeah like I- the way that like those things kind of interplay with each other I feel are represented genuinely. Yeah, you know? no, it definitely it definitely does uh, ring true of that. And as as someone who's like very much like I don't want to say devout because that'd be a weird thing to say, but like a very strong atheist who also feels very strongly about being tolerant of religions, I'm looking at this from an objective perspective, but I am not in any way endorsing this. I do think this reads like a parent who's genu- genuinely concerned for her children, but I also think just she's so lost in the sauce that yeah. like it, it just it, it, it I mean, comes off really terribly. Yeah, it just be, being the, the manifestation of so many prevalent cultural anxieties of the time, it really goes to show the satanic panic never really ended. No, absolutely not. Uh, and if this is a troll fic, you are a goddamn genius. <laughs> I agree. Maybe it more goes to show how, like, ten years of retrospection and seeing, like, this type of thing evolve into the fanatical sort of QAnon Ouroboros <laughs> that these types of, like, anxieties birthed. Maybe it's it's just being unable to say, see through what is troll and what is genuine because... <laughs> Because the culture we the live line, in now has become yeah. so obscure <laughs> or the, um, absurd is what I meant to say. It's become just, yeah. Maybe maybe it's my fault for, for seeing it through the lens of so much of, of that coming to a head nowadays. Yeah. But like this reads is like, yeah, this, this is so unfunny in how much I think it might be genuine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think <laughs> this would be a good place to cap episode one. Um, Agreed. Yeah. All right. Our music, as always, we'd like to thank Aria for the creation of our theme music. You can find her on Twitter at 2Glitch. And until next time... Don't read where you shit. You remembered it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>